John Murta has left Manchester United. Real Madrid reportedly interested in Kobe Mainu and Mason Greenwood reluctant to coming back to United this summer. These are some of the stories we will be discussing on tonight's live edition on the channel. But before we jump into that, please smash a like on today's video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and let's get straight on into it. So let's start the show off with the big breaking news from today, and that is John Murta has officially stepped down as the director of football at Manchester United. So this is a statement from Manchester United itself. It says, John Murta is now to step down from his position as football director of Manchester United and leave the club after almost 11 years in a variety of roles at Carrington. I think it's about time. We knew this was going to happen. We knew that John Murta effectively wasn't wanted here anymore. Him and Richard Arnold were running the football side for the last couple of years. And let's be honest, they failed. They did. I'm sorry. They went to Barcelona to get Frankie de Jong. They agreed a deal. They spent all summer chasing him. And then Frankie de Jong didn't even want to come. And then they ended up giving Casemiro £375,000 a week and giving Real Madrid £70 million for a 30-year-old, which is stupid, isn't it? And um, we can see now why Eric Ten Hag wanted Frankie de Jong. He is the missing piece of that midfield. And as good as Casemiro has been in his previous time, he, he definitely isn't worth £70 million and he definitely isn't a 375 grand a week player. He's somebody who, in my opinion, should be leaving this summer and he's one of the biggest, if not the biggest player that um, that John Murta brought in alongside Anthony. I mean, the list goes on, doesn't it? He brought in Anthony for, what, 100 million euros. Casemiro, I think, was 70 million pounds. Uh, even Mason Mount. I mean, all of these question marks that people were pointing on Eric Ten Hag is actually more at John Murta. He was the one who was doing these deals. Um, in all fairness, you know, he was, prior to being the director of football, he was heavily involved in the, the the youth team and the player development and stuff. He apparently was one of the people who brought in Garnacho to Manchester United from Atletico Madrid. So you've got to give him some credit for that. But overall, I think John Murta leaving the club is a positive. You know, he's been here for 11 years. We've won effectively nothing of any importance in the last 11 years. I know we won our last Premier League trophy, was it 10 years ago now? But when you look at it over the 11 years that he's been here, I think we've won the Europa League, the FA Cup and the League Cup, and that's kind of it. So thank you, John Murta. Goodbye. And uh, I'm really excited for the new beginning. So moving on to the new beginning, the Telegraph are reporting this afternoon that Manchester United are now accelerating moves to appoint Jason Wilcox and Dan Ashworth after announcing the director, uh, sorry, after announcing the departure of football director John Murta. So obviously John Murta and Richard Arnold will leave and then um, Dan Ashworth's going to come in as the director of football and um, Jason Wilcox going to come in as well. Really, really excited about this. Obviously, we've already got Omar Barada as the CEO and we're finally starting to see what a proper football club should run like. Now, I know it's still very early days, just because John Murta leaves doesn't mean we're going to be winning the Champions League next season. We've still got a very, very long way to go. And I think everyone has to just keep their feet on the ground. What Ineos have done so far, in my opinion, has been positive. I think they've done everything right to this point, whether that be, you know, removing people like uh, Richard Arnold at an early stage, obviously now John Murta going, managing to get Manchester, uh, managing to get Omar Barada from Man City. That was an incredible coup. Obviously, Dan Ashworth, like they're doing well so far. So um, <clears throat> they have my plaudits. I'm impressed. But at the end of the day, it, it doesn't mean anything at this point, does it? Until we're actually challenging for titles again. Um, like, you know, I'm not going to sit here and celebrate like we've just won a trophy that John Murta's left. Like, it's, you know, it's positive, but we at the end of the day, we're here to win trophies. And obviously, that's the goal for us and that's the goal for Ineos. So, obviously, we'll keep you updated on the Dan Ashworth situation. Uh, the story says it was mutually agreed that now is the right time for Murta to step aside. The aim is to bring in Dan Ashworth as the sporting director and Jason Wilcox as the technical director. Uh, it says that they also want, Man United also want Darren Fletcher to stay uh, but it will be as a new role, which I have no problem with. Um, Jamie Jackson, who is a reliable journalist for various different outlets, uh, he is reporting this afternoon that apparently Omar Barada and Jason Wilcox have been lined up to lead Manchester United's trans transfer market strategy this summer because Sir Jim Ratcliffe believes Dan Ashworth's arrival as sporting director is still a little while away. So for anybody wondering what's going on with Dan Ashworth, obviously he handed in his notice at Newcastle but Newcastle have now put him on gardening leave. What that means? Effectively, he can't go and work for another football club for, for 12 months, apparently. Uh, Man United are reportedly 
negotiating terms with Newcastle to try and make that shorter. But at the moment, we're still waiting to see. Uh, let's have a little look in the chat then. Welcome, everybody. Again, apologies for the, um, the lack of videos over the weekend. I was in Manchester. It was my birthday. It was my 30th birthday uh, weekend. And I was up there for the Liverpool game. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but make sure to smash a like on the video, guys. Let's try and see 100 likes on today's show. We're on about 25 so far. So if everybody who likes the video, uh, sorry, if everybody who's watching the video right now gives it a like, we will hit our target. Um, but yeah, get your questions in as well. I'll read out some of your comments in a minute. I'll rattle through the news and then I'll come back to the chat. Um, right. So obviously, yeah, we've talked about Omar Barada, talked about Jason Wilcox. Got some injury news for you. Obviously, uh, McTominay wasn't available for the game against Liverpool on Sunday. I don't personally think he would have made much difference, being completely honest. I know Casemiro was terrible, but I think Casemiro still did more than what McTominay would offer. And, and that's not me really being harsh, is it? McTominay is okay further up the pitch. I think he's quite good in an attacking sense, but defensively, it's effectively like you don't have anybody in that position. He offers nothing. So although Casemiro was absolutely terrible against Liverpool in the stadium, I'm telling you, the fans in the stadium were not happy with Casemiro whatsoever. There was a lot of groans. All of the people around me I was talking to, everyone was saying, what the hell is Casemiro doing? He put in an absolute stinker. Um, but uh, yeah, in relation to McTominay, apparently he's going to be out for around three weeks. The story reports that he hyper extended his knee in last week's defeat at Chelsea. I'm going to be honest, guys. I Obviously, I don't wish injury upon anybody, but I would much rather see Mason Mount get an opportunity than McTominay. Like, we bought Mason Mount for £60 million in the summer. He's barely played. He's now fit again. He got a goal against Chelsea. In the cameos he's had over the last couple of games where he's come, come off the bench in the last 10 or so minutes, he's looked decent. He puts in effort. And I, I would much rather see him play than McTominay. I would. I would much rather us just go out in the last kind of seven or eight games with a midfield of Kobe Mainu, uh, Mason Mount and Bruno Fernandes. Like, why not? Casemiro clearly isn't up to it anymore. Kobe Mainu desperately needs some kind of support around him. And I think if we went for that midfield three for the next kind of six or seven games, then, you know, let's see what happens. Because we've spent all of this money on Mason Mount. Whether we think that that money was well spent or not, we've got to try and make it work because you can't just try and sell him now. I think he's on a six-year contract. Like, he's, he's here now. Mason Mount is here. Uh, if you look at the next few fixtures we've got as well, obviously we played Bournemouth on Saturday, which I know people will say, what are you talking about? But Bournemouth away is a difficult game. It really, really is. But after that in the Prem, we've got Sheffield United at home and Burnley at home. Both of those two games, I would play Mason Mount, Bruno and Kobe Maynard as the midfield three. Because, like, not being funny, but we should be beating Burnley and Sheffield United at home. And we should be going into those games with a real attacking mind sense to try and get our goal difference up. So I hope that we do see that midfield free. Whether it will happen or not, I'm not entirely sure. Um, big ups to Fred. Hope you're doing well, my friend, who's just gifted five memberships to the Daily Red Devil Members Club. Thank you very much for your support, my friend. If you did just get a membership from Fred, please make sure to uh, subscribe. Not subscribe. Please make sure to thank Fred. Um... Talking of subscribing, we're, we're so close to 21,400, guys. Everybody watching, it was my birthday the other day, so please do subscribe. Let's try and, you know, as a birthday present for me, let's try and hit 21,400. We've been, like, on the brink of it for so long, and it's really, really frustrating me. So please, if you're watching this for the first time, subscribe now, and let's hit that new milestone. Um, right, let's see what people are saying in the chat this evening, then. What have we got? Malp says Casemiro and Varane must go. Top players in the game, but it's time for them both to go to Saudi and join Ronaldo. I agree, mate. 100%. 150%. I literally could not agree with you more. Uh, Ruben says, I think Mason Mount is better than Rashford, both in attack and defence. That's a strong statement, but I'll be honest with you, mate. I, I don't really disagree. I really, really don't. I think, as I said, obviously, I was at the game on Sunday talking to loads of fans and people in the stadium. And it's I, I hate this whole connotation that you get from people that it's only Internet fans who who dislike certain players. Um, that, that isn't the case. The, most people, you know, aren't happy with Mace, uh, with Marcus Rashford, who were at the game on Sunday. Like from people I spoke to, from the general mood on the pitch, like people are really, really on, uh, on Mason... I keep getting my words up mixed up. They're really on Marcus Rashford's back, you know? Um, but what I do think is interesting, I know a lot of people don't seem to like Bruno Fernandes, but the old Trafford crowd absolutely love Bruno. 
They love him. And and you know what? I can see why. He he gives 150% every single game, Bruno Fernandes. Yes, he misplaced passes. Yes, sometimes he's a bit lazy with the ball. But you cannot doubt his commitment to Manchester United. And in a season where so many players in this team's commitment's been, um, uh, you know, up for debate, you cannot for one second question Bruno Fernandes. You can't. His commitment is unbelievable. Yes, he makes stupid passes. Yes, maybe he's not a player who, you know, is a Premier League winner, if that makes sense. I've seen quite a few people, a few of my friends said, you know, would you get rid of Bruno Fernandes? And it's a difficult one because in short, I don't think we're going to win a Premier League title with Bruno Fernandes, but I don't think we're going to win a Premier League title anyway, though. Does that make sense? Like, I personally wouldn't sell Bruno, but I don't think we'll win the Premier League with Bruno. Does that make sense? I know that sounds a little bit strange, but um, I think we're so far away from winning a Premier League that it's not as simple as sell Bruno and Rashford and we'll win the Premier League. Like, I, I still think we'll be battling for top four. Um, so we've got a couple of comments coming in quickly. Let's have a look. So Acid28 says, Kieran, do you think Bruno would improve with a more consistent squad around him? Yeah, mate, of course. We don't have a, a, a central defensive midfielder. We don't. Casemiro, is, his legs are gone. You could see it. Honestly, watching Casemiro live on Sunday in the stadium, it was like watching a player in a soccer aid match. I'm sorry. He can barely run. He really, really was struggling. And maybe he's injured. Maybe there's more to it that we don't know. So I don't want to be overly critical on him because we know that a lot of the players um, in this team have been playing through injuries and all the rest of it. But he was terrible on Sunday. Absolutely awful. He was trying. He's just not He's just not good enough anymore. Um, that's what else we got. Stretford Gamer says, Kieran, are there any free or young centre-backs for a reasonable price? I mean, the most likely option for a CDM is probably going to be Onana from Everton, Amadou Onana. Um if Everton was to get relegated, they're going to be really, really desperate for money. And, and regardless of whether they get relegated, we know that Everton are in a really bad financial situation at the moment. They've spent hundreds and hundreds of millions on this new stadium. They're getting fined constantly because of uh, financial fair play issues. Um, I think Amadou Anana would be a quality signing. I think that's who we should go for personally. He's already done it in the Premier League. He's in the Belgian national team. You know, he is the real deal. Uh, so, yeah, for me personally, if we could get Amadou Nana for 40, 50 million pounds, I think he would be the perfect fit. But um, you can let me know in the comment section, who do you think Manchester United should look to sign in the midfield position in the summer? Is it another one where we go after Frankie De Jong again? I hope not. I hope that we don't have to go through that whole saga ever again. Uh, keeping on the topics of midfielders, I wanted to bring in this story about Kobe Mainu now. I'll just say this, right? Kobe Mainu on Sunday, unbelievable. That goal was absolutely beautiful. I was in the corner, um, like directly behind the goal where when they scored that. And yeah, it was it was an unbelievable moment. 18 years of age, getting his first goal, going and celebrating at the Stratford end. Big ups to Kobe Mainu. Uh, but the story coming out this evening, now obviously take this with a pinch of salt, everybody. Don't get too worked up about this. But um, there's a story coming out from uh, a Sky Sports journalist in Spain and they are reporting that apparently Real Madrid are interested in signing Kobe Mainu. I mean, is that really even a story? Of course they're going to be interested. I'm sure every top club in the world is looking at Kobe Mainu at the moment and saying he could be one of the best players in the world in the next kind of five years. You know, he's only 18. By the age, by the time he's 23, right, he'll either be one of the, the top 10 centre midfielders in the world or he'll be playing for someone like Burnley at the bottom of the Premier League. Now, I think he'll be one of the top in the world, but you get where I'm going with this. You never know. Footballers with potential, sometimes they make it to the top. Sometimes they get a really bad injury. Like things can happen, can't they? Crazy things can happen in, in the world. So me personally, I think he's going all the way to the top. And that's why obviously teams like Real Madrid are interested in him. But we know that he's, you know, a local lad. We know that he's come through the youth academy. I see no reason why Kobe Mainu would even want to entertain moving to another club. We know that Manchester City were interested in signing him last summer before he'd even made his Man United debut. He didn't even entertain it. And that was going to Man City, playing under Pep, playing for a team who, who were on the brink of winning the treble, and he still chose to stay at Man United. So I don't really have any worry about this. Um, when you compare that to somebody like Garnacho, I think that is a different story. We know that Garnacho is 
dreams of going to Real Madrid, I think. That that's what, you know, that's that's what we're led to believe. But uh yeah, Kobe Main is going nowhere, but I imagine Garnacho will probably go at some point in the next kind of three to five years. Uh let's see what people are saying in the comment section quickly. Caesar says, Kieran, give us your thoughts on the Liverpool game, our style of play in that game, and Neville's comments. Thank you for the question. Um, the first half against Liverpool. Honestly, it was it was it was terrible. It was absolutely awful. The crowd were really on them. Uh, so the Stretford end is where the tunnel is. Okay, that generally the Stretford end is the most loud end of the of the ground. Right, that's where the tunnel is that the players walk through at half time and at full time. Right, at half time, the Stretford end was giving the players honestly absolute dogs abuse, absolute abuse. They were they, they were shouting at them. They weren't happy, and I, I don't blame them. Zero shots on target. It was the first time that Manchester United didn't manage... Sorry, not even shots on target. Shots at all, right? Zero shots in the first half. Not one. That was the first time that that's happened since 2015. Nine years ago. Let that sink in for a minute. I mean, that's just crazy. I'm sorry. Uh, the second half, obviously, we got back into the game... I I was happy with the draw. I, I was expecting us to go and get absolutely battered, to be honest. Uh, obviously, Liverpool had a lot of chances that they didn't they didn't miss. And I want to say this as well, actually, right? I've been to Old Trafford quite a lot of times and the Liverpool fans were really quiet. Really, really quiet. I've been to see Man United Newcastle a few times and the Newcastle fans were like, honestly, so loud, bouncing. The Liverpool fans were were really quiet. It was it was surprising. I thought they were. I've never seen Liverpool play before, like live. But yeah, they were really quiet. Um, by way of tactics, I think it's clear to see that Manchester United have this kind of hole in the midfield. And there was a really interesting interview that's resurfaced. Okay, a really interesting interview. It was on Dutch TV when Eric ten Hag was the manager of Ajax. Uh, it was it was about three or four years ago, and it's a panel. It's Eric ten Hag, Ruud Hillet and a couple of other people. And they're talking about the Ajax style of play. They're talking about, they're, they're kind of analysing how Ajax were playing. This is when Eric Ten Hag was the manager of Ajax. And interestingly enough, Eric Ten Hag played a similar style of football to what he's doing now at Ajax, where he literally sends everybody forward, including the, the, the midfielders. And Ruud Hillett was asking him, he was saying, why do you send all these midfielders forward? When you get counted on, like we do, there's no midfield. There's no one to stop them. And Eric Ten Hag has, has, has effectively said that, um, that you know, they put this overload on them. And it works in, in the Dutch league, but it doesn't work in the Premier League. And it's, it's similar to what Pep Guardiola tried when he first came to Manchester United. But in the end, uh, he brought Rodri in, didn't he? So, yeah, it's, it's food for thought. Um, big ups to Fred again, my friend. Thank you so much for your support. He skifted another five memberships to the Daily Red Devil Members Club. Thank you so much, mate. I hope you are doing well. Uh, let's crack on with the rest of the show, though. Let's talk a little bit about Mason Greenwood too much. I, I don't want to focus on him forever, but um, more news coming out about Mason Greenwood. And the story is that Mason Greenwood is not bothered about returning to England. He is very open to moving to another European league permanently. Let me know what you guys think about that. I'm just going to have a sip of water. A proper dry throat at the moment. I think it was from all my, my shouting on the, at the game on Sunday. Um, Mason Greenwood, I think for me, like he needs to go. It's as simple as that. It really, really is. Um, yes, he was, he, was a, he was a good player. He was arguably a generational talent. Yes, he would improve our team at the moment, but he's not going to come back. So, yeah, whether you want him to come back or not, I think it's kind of irrelevant now, to be honest, because they're not going to bring him back. It just it just won't happen. So let's just move on from that Mason Greenwood one. Um, apparently, Juventus are interested in him. We'll have to wait and see. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about Varane and Casemiro. Again, Casemiro had an absolute stinker on Sunday. Terrible. Uh, the story coming out this evening is that apparently Varane and Casemiro are both expected to leave Manchester United this summer. He says United are willing to offer Varane a new contract on reduced wages, but it is more likely that he will leave. Varane's currently on 350 grand a week. Now, the question I wanted to ask you guys and to kind of get some interaction going is how much... So Varane's contract expires in two months, okay? He will leave the club for nothing. The first part of the question is, would you give Varane a new contract, Okay. And the second part of it is, 
how much a week do you think Varane should uh, should earn? He's earning 350 grand a week. Take in mind, we 95% are not going to be in the Champions League next season. Okay? We're not going to. Simple as. Um, this season, he has missed... I mean, it's not actually been too bad. He's missed five games through injury this season. That's not terrible, is it? Last season, he missed about 20 games through injury. And the season before that, he missed five games. So it's not been awful, in all, in all fairness. But... Um, for me personally, unless he's going to take about 150 grand a week, which is nearly a third of what he's on now, I personally wouldn't do it. I, I would let him go. Um, yeah, I, I would I would not let him go. Uh, sorry, I would let him go. I think him and Varane, sorry, Varane and Casemiro, their wages combined is about 750 grand a week. I mean, just let that sink in for a minute. 750,000 pounds per week. That's That's mental, I'm sorry. Even if you look at that over the space of a year, it's about 36 million pounds a year. 36 million on two players who, let's be honest, are probably not good enough anymore. Yeah, ridiculous. I think as as Zane says, he's agreeing, around 150,000 a week would be a fair amount of money for, for, for uh, Varane at this stage in his career, you know? But why would he take that if he can go and play for... Um, a team in Saudi and probably earn half a million to a million a week? Uh, Muiz says, hi, Kieran. Realistically, how many players do you think will leave? That's a great question. I'm going to go through this really, really quickly, actually. So there was a story this morning that said apparently Ineos are going to look to move as many as 10 or more players on from the club. I, I, I think we'll easily do that because look at it really, really quickly, right? Varane's contract expires. Johnny Evans' contract expires. Tom Heaton's contract expires. Um, Martial's contract expires. Brandon Williams' contract expires. Omar Forson, Amari Forson's contract expires. That's six players already whose contracts all expire. Then you've got Amrabat. His, his contract, his loan contract expires. So that's seven players who will 100% leave the club this summer. Seven, as a guarantee. Uh, Tom Heaton as well, actually. His contract expires. So that's eight players. Eight players will be gone in May. That's without even selling anybody. Then you've got people like Donny van der Beek, Jaden Sancho, um, Lindelof, Maguire, Casemiro. I mean, who else? I mean, like Ahmad, what's going to happen to him? Pelistri, Hannibal. Like, if Ineos are going to be competent, competent, competent in their job, there should be about 15 players leaving this summer easily because there's seven or eight who are out of contract and contracts aren't going to be renewed. So, you know, we should easily be able to get rid of about 15 people this summer and then hopefully bring in maybe seven or eight players, as well as promote some people from the youth. You know, people like Harry Amas, the, the left back, he should come through. Um, maybe Dan Gore comes back. Like, we should be bringing people through the youth because so far, look at the players who've come for our youth since Eric Ten Hag's been here. Willy Cambuala, unbelievable on Sunday. Man of the match for me. Absolutely unbelievable. He was getting the crowd going. Honestly, I'm telling you, if Willy Cambuala stays fit, because I know he's had some injury problems in the past... I think he's good enough to be a starting centre-back for Man United in the future. Willy Cambuala, unbelievable on Sunday against arguably the best attacking three in the in the Premier League. Salah, uh, Darwin Nunes and um, whatever the other guy's called. I can't remember his name. Uh, Diaz. So yeah, um, I, I would say 15 players needs to be kind of the benchmark, but we'll have to wait and see what happens there. Um, right, let's see what else we've got. I think that's everything we've got planned for the show tonight. So I'm going to wrap it up here, guys. I will be... There will be a pre-recorded video tomorrow morning with all your kind of morning news, and then I'll be back live. Um, I'm not sure why I'm tapping the microphone with my pen. I apologize for that. I'll be back live tomorrow at six o'clock for another live video like this. So yeah, there'll be a pre-recorded in the morning and then a live video um, tomorrow evening. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all of the um, new members. Welcome. Thank you for Fred for your contributions. As I said, guys, we're very, very close to 21,400 subs. So please do go and subscribe. Doesn't cost you any money. Smash a like on your way out. This has been Daily Red Devil. Have a great day, everybody. And I'll speak to you all later.